students welcome to Sunil's tutorial I am Sunil Mirwani and today we will be doing this chapter called as rotational motion now let's try to understand what is moment of inertia let's try to understand what is moment of inertia now first of all we should know what is inertia the tendency of a body to maintain state of rest or uniform motion along a straight line is called as inertia now I can say that bodies which are in uniform rotational motion also show a tendency to oppose the state of uniform rotational motion. See, we have already learned what is inertia. A body at rest continues to stay at rest or a body in motion continues to remain in motion and this property is called as inertia. Now, in, when the body is in motion, instead of it being in linear motion, if it is in rotational motion, it continues to stay in that state of rotational motion right so I can say that bodies bodies in use uniform rotational motion bodies in uniform rotational motion show tendency show tendency to oppose any change show tendency to oppose any change in their state of uniform rotation motion We show a tendency to oppose any change in the state of uniform rotational motion and this property possessed by the body this property possessed by bodies in uniform rotation motion rotational motion is called moment of inertia moment of inertia so what is moment of inertia it is the tendency of a body which is in rotational motion to stay in rotational motion fine do we get the same here now so moment of inertia therefore i can say is a property that is possessed by body in rotational motion now let us consider a body right let us assume that this is my axis of rotation let us assume that the body is made up of multiple small points which have masses m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 and m6 which are situated at a distance of r1 r2 r3 R4, R5 and R6 from the axis of rotation. In that case, I can say consider consider a body consider a body consisting of of N particles of mass particles of mass m1 m2 and so on up till mn at a distance of at a distance of r1 r2 rn from the axis of rotation In that case, I can say therefore the moment of inertia, moment of inertia is defined as the product of mass and square of the distance from the axis of rotation. The sum of the product of mass and square of the distance from axis of rotation. 
this is going to be plus mn rn square so this can be written as moment of inertia is sigma i is equal to 1 to n mn rn square ri mi ri square that is my moment of inertia fine do we get this thing here therefore how do i define moment of inertia moment of inertia therefore of a body is defined as moment of inertia henceforth i'll write it as mi moment of inertia of a body moment of inertia of a body about a given axis about a given axis of rotation is defined is defined as the sum of the products of is defined as the sum of the products of mass of each particle mass of each particle and the square of its distance square of its distance from the axis of rotation that's how you define moment of inertia now, once I know what is moment of inertia, then I can say that uh, what are the SI units of moment of inertia? Units. SI unit. It is nothing but the product of mass, that is kg, and square of the distance. So, kg meter square. Right? And the CGS units will be grams centimeter square right next the dimensions what are the dimensions mass so this will be m1 meter square l2 t0 so the dimension will be m1 l2 t0 fine do we get this thing here so that is called as um, moment of inertia fine do we get this thing here Next, <coughs> why do we need to study about moment of inertia? What is the physical significance of moment of inertia? physical significance of mi now let's consider translational motion now for translational motion i can say that uh, translational motion of a body is produced or changed by application of force in transition motion is produced by application of force and force is given by the formula <coughs> mass <coughs> into acceleration right next now in rotational motion, rotation motion is produced by rotational motion is produced by torque by application of torque what is torque? torque is given by the formula moment of inertia 
moment of inertia into angular acceleration Thus, I can say that by definition, what is linear acceleration? Linear acceleration is the rate of change of linear velocity, right? And angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity. So, if I compare the two formulas, it shows that for linear motion, uh, linear motion, if I compare the two equations, I can say that force of linear motion corresponds to the torque of rotational motion right in which case I can therefore say that moment of inertia of a rotation motion corresponds to the mass of a translation motion that's the physical significance of it right do you get this thing here so I can say that so moment of inertia of a body of a rotation motion is same as the mass of a body in translation motion right so that is the relationship between moment of inertia and mass right I can say that the comparison comparison of the two equations comparison of the two equation clearly shows comparison of the two equations clearly shows that force comparison of linear equation uh, comparison of the two equation clearly shows that force in linear motion corresponds to force in linear motion corresponds to torque in rotational motion find you with this thing here therefore as an linear acceleration corresponds to angular acceleration linear acceleration corresponds to angular acceleration therefore I can say that the mass of the body in linear motion should correspond to the moment of inertia of the body in rotation motion therefore mass of body in linear motion should correspond mass of the body in linear motion should correspond to moment of, moment of inertia of the body in rotation motion so, mi in rotation motion find you with this thing here so uh, thus a body which, uh, which is in translational motion has a tendency to oppose state of uh, oppose the state of transition motion and this property is called as inertia uh, measure now if I consider mass is a measure of inertia of the body in the transition motion larger the mass more will be the inertia of the body in transition motion right Similarly, I can say if a body possesses rotational motion, it opposes any state of change in its rotation motion and this is called as moment of inertia, right? So, do we understand this? So, I can say the inertia of a body in rotation motion represented in physical quantity is nothing but moment of inertia. That's my physical significance of moment of inertia. Next, <coughs> let us try to get the kinetic energy of a rotating body let us try to find out the kinetic energy of a rotation body kinetic energy of 
rotational body. Now, let's consider a rigid body. Right? Let's assume that this is my axis of rotation. Let's consider a body with mass m1, m2, m3, and m4 at a distance of r1, r2, r3, and r4. Right? Consider consider a rigid body. Consider a rigid body rotating about a given axis of rotation. Rotating about a given axis of rotation. With constant angular velocity. Omega. Let's assume that the body is rotating with a velocity of omega, angular velocity of omega. Right? <coughs> now, consider n particles. Consider <coughs> body consisting of consists of n particles of mass m1, m2, mn at a distance of at a distance of r1, r2, rn from the axis of rotation right now <coughs> since all the board all the points are on the body, therefore I can say that every particle will have the same angular velocity omega. Every particle will have the same angular velocity omega. Right? Now, in that case I can say that let's just consider one point on the body. So let's consider a particle of mass m1. Consider a particle of mass m1. Consider a particle of mass m1 at a distance at a distance of r1. Right? Let V1 be the linear velocity of the body. Be the linear velocity of the body. Now, if V1 is the linear velocity of the body, then we know the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. I can say V is equal to R omega. So, therefore, I can say V1 is equal to R1 omega. Now, we also know that kinetic energy of this particle, kinetic energy even of this particle E1 is half mv1 square which will be half m1 v1 square. So that is r1 omega the whole square. So this will be half m1 r1 square omega square that will be the kinetic energy similarly i can say that the kinetic energy of the other particles can also be found out right similarly kinetic energy of other particles can also be found once I have kinetic energy of all the particles, I can say that the total kinetic energy of the body is the sum of the kinetic energy of all the particles. I can say therefore, total kinetic energy is the sum 
of kinetic energy of all particles therefore I can say that total kinetic energy E is nothing but the sum of the kinetic energy of all the particles so that is going to be half m1 r1 square omega 1 omega square plus half m2 r2 square omega square plus half mn rn square omega square here I could take half omega square common if I take half omega square common this will be half m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus mn rn square omega square right in which case this can be written as half sigma i is equal to 1 to n mi ri square omega square but by definition sigma i is equal to 1 to n mi ri square is nothing but moment of inertia so half i omega square so kinetic energy of a rotation body is going to be half i omega square fine do we get this thing here now let's find out kinetic energy of a rolling body kinetic energy of a rolling body now I can say that a rolling body possesses two different types of motion a rolling body possesses possesses two motions one is the linear if it is rolling it will definitely see guys if this is the body and if it is moving in this direction so it will definitely possess some linear motion and it is rolling therefore it will also possess some rotation motion it possesses two motions one a the linear motion is linear motion and b is rotational motion these are the two different types of motions that it possesses therefore I can say that the kinetic energy of a rolling body will be nothing but the kinetic energy due to the linear motion and rotation motion I can say that therefore the kinetic energy therefore kinetic energy of a rolling body is due to linear motion as well as rotational motion right in which case therefore I can say that Ke kinetic energy of rolling body is equal to linear kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy linear kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy right linear kinetic energy we know as half mv square rotational kinetic energy is half i omega square therefore i can see that this is going to be my equation for a rolling body fine do we get this thing here next let's try to find out something else let's find out what is radius of gyration moment of inertia of a body we just understood is depends upon the mass of the body and the distribution of the mass about the axis of rotation so these two factors can be separated from each other see what is moment of inertia half mi ri square that means 
moment of inertia is made up of two components. It is made up of mass and the distribution of mass on the body, right? Now, I can separate these two components from each other by expressing moment of inertia as a product of mass of the body and the square of a particular length. Sigma, see guys, we said moment of inertia is half mi moment of inertia is sigma mi ri square where i is equal to 1 to <coughs> n now i can separate this part we have ri square we have ri square now that ri square will be equal to some particular length so i can express this in terms of some particular length and that particular length which represents this component ri square sigma i is equal to 1 to n ri square is called as the radius of gyration so it is one particular length that uh, explains to us the distribution of mass of the body fine do you get this thing clear so, so what is radius of gyration i can say that uh, moment of inertia depends moment of inertia depends upon the mass moment of inertia depends upon the mass of the body and distribution and distribution of the mass about axis of rotation right now I can say that these two factors can be separated from each other these two factors can be separated from each other by expressing these two factors can be separated from each other by expressing moment of inertia as a product of mass and square of a particular length Right? Now this particular length is called as the radius of gyration. This particular length is called radius of gyration. Fine, do you get the same thing? So do we understand what is radius of gyration? Now I can therefore say that Consider, um, consider this is replaced by a single particle of mass m. Consider a disk replaced by a single particle of mass m, capital M replaced by a single particle of mass m placed at a distance of k from the axis of rotation placed at a distance of k from the axis of rotation in which case I can then say that um, Therefore, moment of inertia of the disk, moment of inertia will be nothing but total mass of the body is m k square, where k is called as the radius of gyration, where k is the radius of gyration. Right? Now, in that case, how do I define radius of gyration? 
radius of gyration of a body about a given axis of rotation is defined as radius of gyration about a given axis of rotation is defined as is defined as the distance between the axis of rotation at the distance between axis of rotation the distance between the axis of rotation and a point where the whole mass of the body can be supposed to be concentrated and a point and a point at which the whole mass of the body at which the whole mass of the body at which the whole mass of the body can be concentrated can be supposed to be concentrated and we assumed to be concentrated right so as to possess the same moment of inertia as that of the body so as to possess the same moment of inertia of that of the body So do we understand what is radius of gyration? Question: Why do I want to study about radius of gyration? Physical significance of radius of gyration. Physical significance of radius. What is the physical significance of radius of gyration or gyration? I can say that moment of inertia of a body about an axis of rotation depends upon two factors. We have already discussed this: the mass of the body and the distribution of the mass of the body about the axis of rotation. Now, moment of inertia of a body can therefore be conveniently written as the product of total mass. And the square of a particular length, and this particular length is called as your radius of gyration. Thus, I can say that uh, a it is very easy to express the particular length about which the uh, moment of inertia is based. Second, the magnitude of radius of gyration tells us, gives us general information regarding the distribution of the mass. Uh, about the axis of rotation fine smaller the value that means the mass is closely distributed about the axis of rotation larger the value of k the mass is further dispersed from the axis of rotation fine do we get this thing here these are the two things that you learn from radius of gyration i can say that first moment of inertia of a body can be conveniently can be conveniently expressed as the product of mass a product of mass and square of a particular length right that is i could say that i is equal to mk square so that's the first thing second the magnitude of radius of gyration magnitude of radius of gyration 
magnitude of, of radius of gyration gives information regarding the distribution of mass gives information about the distribution of mass gives information about the distribution of mass about an axis of rotation That's my physical significance of moment of inertia. Uh, sorry, radius of gyration. Next, what do we understand by torque? Now, torque. By definition, what is torque? Torque is two equal and parallel forces acting in opposite direction at two different points. Right? Now, therefore, I can say that torque definition what we have studied is it is nothing but two equal and parallel forces two equal and parallel forces acting at acting in opposite direction acting in opposite direction at two different points acting at two different points of the body constitute torque right torque is also called as couple or it is also called as moment of couple so thus torque is defined as the product of any one force multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the forces between the forces therefore I can say torque is FR right in vector form I can say torque is equal to F vector cross R vector that will be the vector notation for torque right now let's try to find out the relationship between torque and moment of inertia. Okay. What about that torque that you found over there? Which the torque is your moment of inertia and Into I'm coming to that only. I'll show you how I got that. That's exactly what I'm finding out now. The relationship between moment of inertia and torque. Relation between MI and torque right <coughs> now let's consider a rigid body let's assume it has axis of rotation let M1, M2, M3 be M1, M2, M3, M4 be at a distance of R1, R2 R3 and R4 from the axle of rotation right um, now let's assume let let T be the torque applied to a rigid body let T be the torque applied to a rigid body let T be a torque applied to a rigid body right uh, so that it rotates with uniform angular acceleration of alpha so that it rotates with uniform angular acceleration it rotates with uniform angular acceleration alpha about 
that uh, about the axis of rotation passing through O. The axis of rotation passing through O. Right? So in that case I can say that the body can be imagined to be consisting of n particles. The body can be imagined of consisting of n particles the body can be imagined of consisting of n particles with mass m1, m2, mn situated at a distance of at a distance of R1, R2, Rn from the axis of rotation right now I can say that during the time the body rotates about the axis of rotation each particle revolves in a circle of equal radius and at a perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation with a constant acceleration of alpha during now if a body is moving in a circular motion during the time the body rotates about the axis of rotation during the time the body rotates about the axis of rotation Every particle on the body revolves in a circle. Every particle on the body revolves in a circle. Every particle on the body revolves in a circle of radius. equal to equal to its perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation equal to its perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation right with constant acceleration alpha What this means is that every particle which is there in the body is moving in UCM, right? So I can say that let's consider a particle M1 revolving in a circle of radius. This shows that every particle of the body is moving in UCM. So now I'm going to consider the UCM uh, theory. So consider a particle of mass M1. Consider a particle of mass m1 revolving of a body revolving in a circle of radius of the body revolving revolving in a circle of radius revolving in a circle of radius r1 with angular acceleration alpha. Right? So in which case I can therefore say that the linear acceleration linear acceleration A1 will be nothing but R1 into alpha. This is my relationship between linear acceleration and angular acceleration. Now if I apply Newton's second law of motion Newton's second law of motion I can say that force F1 on this particle F1 on this 
particle can be given by F1 mass forces mass into acceleration. Acceleration, linear acceleration you found out is R1 alpha. Therefore, F1 will be equal to M1 R1 alpha. But by definition, torque is nothing but force into moment arm and perpendicular distance is called as moment arm. So torque T1 will be equal to force that is he has found out M1 R1 alpha into perpendicular distance that is R1 therefore torque is going to be M1 R1 square alpha that is going to be the torque that will be acting as on a particle. I can say in the same manner torque on other particles can be found out. Similarly torque acting on other particles can be found. Now the total torque possessed by the body is going to be nothing but the sum of all the torques acting on the particles of the body total torque acting on the body is the sum of the torques acting <coughs> on the particles of the body Right. In that case, therefore, I can say total torque is nothing but T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus up till Tn. Total torque is going to be the sum of all the torques. So T, total torque T is nothing but M1 R1 square alpha plus M2 R2 square alpha plus Mn Rn square alpha. Right here, I could take alpha common. So in that case, this will be m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus mn rn square into alpha. Now this can be written as nothing but sigma mi ri square when r is equal to one to n. This is nothing but torque is sigma mi ri square when i is equal to 1 to n into alpha but sigma mi ri square when i is equal to 1 to n is nothing but moment of inertia therefore i can say that torque is nothing but moment of inertia into alpha that's the relationship between moment of inertia and torque t is equal to i alpha and i presume that's what you were asking me Torque, of, torque is moment of inertia into angular acceleration, right? Okay, we'll stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.